So with Ambernic being one of the most exciting companies putting out new retro handhelds, from really budget to more expensive, I wanted to try to find the cheapest retro handheld that Ambernic sells, and we have it right here. This is a $20, and I even got it for about $16 on sale, retro handheld called the Retro Mini. So you can find this on the official Ambernic store for about $20 right now, clearly being sold as an Ambernic handheld. And later in the video, I'm going to go over some doubts that this is actually manufactured by Ambernic but as you can see right here and I'll have it linked down below this is sold as an Ambernic handheld on the official Ambernic AliExpress store so they're selling it as if it's their handheld and today I'm going to take a quick look and see if this thing is actually good for the price because Ambernic is known to make some very good budget devices so I wanted to know how good was the $20 one today we're going to find out taking it out of the box you can see there's nothing fancy it's just a micro USB cable a manual and then the handheld itself. You can see looking at the front, it has a really unique design because it only actually has two buttons, an A and a B button. You also have a D-pad, a start and select button. Turning it over to the side, you have a micro SD card slot, which is actually optional. There are some games already built into this. So if you buy some of these handhelds, they won't come with a micro USB card. The one that I bought came with a micro SD card and it was specified. So if they don't specify that it comes with a card, you're probably not gonna get it. And again, if you don't wanna use it, there's already some games built in as well as the operating system system and you could even bring your own micro SD card later if you want to bring some other games over and on the other side you have a volume wheel as well as the power switch on the bottom you have a headphone jack as well as your micro USB port on the top you have nothing and then turning it over to the back you have your R and your L buttons and these are a little bit hard to press in actually just because of the fact that if you can see there's not that much room for your finger here but I didn't find it to be anything that was unplayable and in a lot of games you're not even gonna be using these anyway considering what this thing can run so overall when it comes to the control Controls, I would say that they're fine. The A and B buttons actually feel pretty good. They're nothing to write home about, but they're pretty good and don't bring up any bad thoughts when I'm playing it. I just play and don't even think about the buttons, which is a good thing for these cheap handhelds because sometimes they're so annoying and it's just constantly ruining your experience. And then you have the D-pad. The D-pad isn't great, but it's about what you'd expect for $20, but I would say it's perfectly fine for almost all games you're going to play here. Again, it could be better, sure, but this thing is $20, so I don't really have too much room to complain here. So now turning it on, I'll first mention the screen. The screen screen on here is tiny as you can tell. It's actually the same resolution as the Game Boy Advance, which is something that a lot of people that have talked about this really liked because it does make Game Boy Advance games seem more natural and might be reminiscent of how they're actually supposed to be played. A lot of people, myself included, probably wouldn't care about that too much and would rather opt for a bigger screen that isn't the exact same as the Game Boy Advance Micro, for example, but it's the same resolution. It's the same size as far as I understand as the Game Boy Advance Micro. So there's something there considering a lot of people might be buying this just to play games. Game Boy Advance games and it can do more especially with custom firmware but everything stock here can't really go past Game Boy Advance and as I show you guys all the settings and everything you can see the screen has pretty bad viewing angles unfortunately I know this cost about $20 but other similar handhelds really do have a better screen than this there's the viewing angles like I mentioned and it doesn't even really get that bright compared to other handhelds which I'm gonna do a little bit later in the video this thing just is not the best when it comes to the screen but it's not the worst thing in the world it's completely playable and I don't like really picking apart these cheap ultra budget handhelds to the level where I can say the screen is horrible because yeah this is what I expect for $20 I don't expect a perfect screen for so cheap and going to the games themselves you have two options one the built-in games and then secondly the games that are in your micro SD card if you have one and looking through the games you'll see what I haven't mentioned yet but I think it's probably obvious to everyone watching the interface here is not very modern this handheld came out about five years ago so you're not going to be getting the most modern interface and even for its time, I'm sure this thing wasn't looking the best. So let's actually start playing some games. I'm going to be looking mainly at Game Boy Advance here because this thing really does seek to be a Game Boy Advance clone kind of handheld that's made for playing Game Boy Advance, although it can play games from other systems. So playing Game Boy Advance games, some games will work better than others. It's not really a good sign when you're getting low frame rate in a lot of Game Boy Advance games. Almost all budget handhelds that you're going to be buying now in this price range will be able to play most Game Boy Advance games very well. You can see in a lot of games like even here Pokemon and I'm actually going to compare this to another budget handheld in a minute or so. It's not running very well. It's playable. I'm not going to say that you can't play it because you certainly can. It's just not perfect and if you want that authentic experience seeing these low frame rates just isn't a smooth enjoyable experience at least for me. I know some people care about that less but I think for most people it's going to be a little annoying and then other games even past that just are not going to be the best at all especially on the screen when you get into other systems 
items, a lot of them just don't look very well. And some text is borderline unreadable, and that's not helped by the fact that the screen is so tiny. For a series of comparisons, here is the Retro Mini compared to the Ambernic RG35XX. I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to cameras and all kinds of settings, so sometimes I feel like my videos aren't perfectly accurate to what the screen looks like in real life, or at least as much as you can be. But even just looking here on camera, you can see a huge difference between the Retro Mini and the RG35XX, just in terms of how vibrant the screen is. And that's not surprising because the RG35XX is like 50 bucks or so. But just looking at the comparison here, it's so obvious that the screen is lacking. And now for comparison of another budget device, the Datafrog SF2000. I'll have the link down below for this, as well as for the Retro Mini if you want to buy them. Through my affiliate link, I'd really appreciate it. It helps support the channel. Anyway, so doing the comparison here, you can see that the screen already is much more more vibrant and even playing Pokemon games it's not perfect there's still some faults in the SF2000 but you can see just walking around it's a lot more smooth and when it comes to other Game Boy Advance games too you're gonna have a much more smooth experience just in general the interface looks better you're gonna have more compatibility for more games there's I think custom firmware coming out if not out already for the SF2000 it's still being developed and it's probably not perfect right now but there's a better community behind the SF2000 for sure and just out of the box the stock firmware comes comes with more games, has better support, and I think you'd be much better with a handheld like this. Not to mention there's other weird features on the Retro Mini. You have the classic video player, ebook reader pictures that you have on some of these really cheap handhelds, especially the older ones that just have really weird, bizarre stock videos, for example, and ebooks and all this, as well as the fact that there are some bad settings on here, like for some reason when you set the brightness down to the lower settings, it almost makes it completely black. It actually looks like the screen is off completely, and I thought I broke it and was hopeless for a while until I realized it just gives it the tiniest amount of brightness possible and I had to go in a dark room and then change it back. So there's some weird stuff on there. There's some positives too. I actually like the two button setup, just A and B. It really does feel reminiscent of a Game Boy. I actually kind of like that. Unfortunately, it's not super powerful. I will say though before the video ends, I'm not going to be exploring it here, but custom firmware does actually exist for the Retro Mini if you want to check that out. I'll have a link down below to a video from another YouTuber that really does a good job showing how to install it and then showing some of the features as well. And it does increase the performance of Game Boy Advance games and other games you can play in here as well. You have the ability to bring RetroArch on here, honestly, is kind of surprising, but you can. The process of doing so is really interesting and different from most other handhelds you'd be bringing custom firmware on. So I thought it was kind of out of the scope for this video, and I just want to show you guys the stock experience because I feel like a lot of people that are buying such a cheap handheld don't want to mess with it too much. They just want something they can use as a backup, and they're not going to put too much attention into. I know there's some weirdos out there that like doing that but I realize for most people they're probably not going to be doing that so maybe in the future I'll look into that but just keep in mind that is an option and it does make this a better value for the money so that might leave you wondering why is it that Ambernick would put out such a bad quality handheld it is a little bit older but it seems a lot different from the other handhelds and after a little bit of investigation and I'm sure a lot of people just figured this out from the start this thing actually is not from what I can tell manufactured by Ambernick it's sold on their official Ambernick AliExpress store it's not like an unofficial thing. It's actually sold by them on their official AliExpress store. And they have this thing marked as an Ambernick handheld, but there's no Ambernick branding on this whatsoever. If you go back to watch old reviews of this when it first came out, there was no mention of this thing being made by Ambernick. If you look at old articles, there's no mention of this being listed as being sold by Ambernick. Other old listings, no mention of it being sold by Ambernick. It just seems like they, in order to make some money, I assume, I don't actually know, but I just imagine they got hold of these or are selling them, drop shipping them or something. I don't even know and slapping the Ambernick name on them just to get some more sales. So I know some people might be enticed by that. They have a good Ambernick handheld and they want to get something cheaper for a gift or whatever. I would say skip this one, honestly. It might be a fun project with the custom firmware if you really want a handheld that's small like this because I really do enjoy the size and the fact that it has just an A and a B button. It's kind of nostalgic for me, but really there's better options out there like I mentioned, the Datafrog SF2000, or if you want to spend like 30 more dollars on something like the RG35X, X or even the R36S, which is not made by Ambernick, but it's another great handheld that you can play up to N64 on, for example, and Dreamcast and Nintendo DS, which this thing cannot touch at all. It's not very powerful whatsoever, as you could tell. But anyway, if you do decide to buy this or the SF2000, which I mentioned also, I'm going to have some links down below in the description to check them out. They are affiliate links. One more time, they come at no extra cost to you and do help fund a small channel like mine, make me be able to buy new handhelds to review, etc., etc. You know the deal. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.